Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 I'm the director, so I have to be good. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, I'm Melissa Knight. I'm the director of Dark Ops and the executive producer. I'm here on set with Paul Cervanka. Paul, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. I am Paul Cervanka, and I play Jeremiah Prince in the series Dark Ops. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, for that. Now I've uh, been working with uh, Alyssa and Melissa Knight for, gosh, it feels like years, but it's literally been one year, and we've done the work of like five in one year. We've done a lot. Yeah, it's been great. A short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been excellent. Within the Dark Ops franchise, how Mm -hmm. has your character evolved throughout the first season, and where do you see that going? Jeremiah has evolved mostly through, he came in first episode sort of just as a team member. And then he, through the struggles of the job, loss, gaining responsibility, he had to work up and grow. I mean, he's been in the the biz of law enforcement for a while, but in this series, he's he's grown through more responsibility, I think, via his his unfortunate loss of you know friends and family. What was your favorite scene this season? My favorite, which I think everyone is going to say, private I'm jet. It right now, <laughs> all the jet. No, the helicopter. Oh, okay. Oh, that. Okay, so before it was the private jet, because the last time in the last BTS interview, I think you said private jet, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now, now it's just the so gunship. Cool. But helicopter. being on the helicopter was so cool. It was my first time in a helicopter, so my unsteady kind of like energy added to the scene. So it worked out. It worked out. But it was my first time in a helicopter, so that was exciting for me, and I loved it. What was it like? Like, I mean, uh, obviously, how? Okay, it's a million dollar question. Yeah. You were trying to battle the fear, probably the fear of being in a helicopter for the first time, the idea of possibly crashing. I mean, he was flying that thing. It wasn't a tour for sure. How did you balance that fear with staying in character? And, you know, not breaking character, but still struggling with, you know, I, that's a lot of emotion yeah. you're dealing with. Same it's, time. first of all, our pilot was amazing. Yeah, it was good. Um, Ex-Marine, fabulous pilot. It was, and it was windy too, so it was yeah. kind of amazing. But I, so without knowing anything, people were like, okay, I went on and it was great. Or other people would be like, it's scary, like it's freaky. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect, uh, but yeah, I got on there and it ended up feeling like I was just on a, like, giant fan hammock in the sky. (laughs) What's a fan hammock? It's like, I felt like I was being just, like, suspended by this hammock with a giant propeller on it. It was great. And I felt like I was actually quite, I was actually quite comfortable. It actually felt really good. Cool. Um, but even still, there were, there were some times where... He was really flying and yeah. using that for the energy of the scene, I think, really helped a lot. Oh, so you actually um, exploited that energy for your own yeah. like, character development. I was just like, oh, scene. man, we're just like going in. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, it was great. How do you personally relate to Jeremiah Prince? And and what similarities are there between Jeremiah and Paul? Mm-hmm. For me, the thing that resonates the most and i've mentioned this before i think is his humor mm. you bring um, a lot of yourself okay i see i will be hanging out and i'll just i'll see jeremiah and you like you, cool. you are just like we're becoming the same <laughs> you're, person. you're becoming the we're same more. person uh but i think it's a bit of his humor because you know most people when they develop humor usually it's at a young age it's from some sort of necessity right uh i think maybe for Jeremiah, which is different for me, is that he probably developed it through his career and mm. having to find a way to cope with the stress and drama of what he does. Right. Um, and you kind of have to probably develop a acquired sense of humor when you deal with um, things like life and death. 
Right. Would you hear about some some vet friends of mine? You know, they're like you. You find yourself joking about things. Yeah. Because you kind of have to, to, so you can carry through the next day. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the people who are watching this interview right now have seen Puppet Master, at least mm. part one. Um, they know about the suicide. You know, that's not a spoiler. Yeah. Was that the sort of the turning point you think for you, or or will be the turning point, especially as we go into season two for sort of where you take Jeremiah's character in now taking care of your sister and her daughter mm. and kind of feeling like this patriarchal, you know, you were a right. bachelor before yeah. this, right? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, early on, speaking of the growth of um, his development and responsibility, things like that. Yeah. He came in, he was kind of like the potential loose cannon and he's yeah. sort of happy-go-lucky like being pumped about the private jet and he's um grown almost, more with that yeah. almost maturing right almost yeah, yeah. yeah. he's yeah. he's becoming a man <laughs> um but i definitely think that that's going to add to his growth i mean first losing it's just loss has driven a lot of his growth unfortunately yeah. um and I think when work directly interferes with friends and family, it's a little bit harder to mask it with, you know, coping of humor. And I think that's getting to him. I, I'm sure there's a lot of young actors who are watching this right now and, mm -hmm. and want to know how, how do you offset mm -hmm just sort of channel Jeremiah and, 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 and continue to build that character and how you approach scenes and how you deliver lines. How do you, how do you prepare for your role? How do you, per, how do you go to the gym, if you will, and, and work right. out, right. you know, as an actor um, with your character uh -huh. and, and prepping for, for shooting those scenes? I think it, it definitely is interesting as the series goes on, the character sort of reveals more of themselves to you. Mm, interesting. As it goes. So it's kind of like... Getting to know him. Yeah, me, the actor, and the character, we sort of work together to build, the, you know, because it's not based on a particular real person. Or right. Like He's that. whoever you decide Jeremiah is. Yeah. And... And how Jeremiah reacts to those particular scenes. Yes, you're given your lines by the writer. Right. Yeah. Um, but you have the ability to take that so much further and deliver those lines in a in a certain way. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you decide to deliver those lines? And uh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. How... So with with prepping for some of these scenes, uh, especially the uh, heavier topics, things like that. Right. Um, I like to not so much think about myself first, but like with, uh, Jeremiah speaking to his niece right. about, you know, potential problems that she's going through. And I might think obviously reading it as much as possible right, and then seeing if something jumps out. So at a certain point, kind of realizing, oh, maybe he's talking to her a little bit of experience wise where he's giving her advice because he's dealt with something similar when he was younger or yeah. in his career. And and that helps you form that conversation, yeah. that tone. Yeah. And then I'll try yeah. to relate that to myself. So it's, it's almost like a cool leapfrog hopscotch of connections just to make it make sense for me so it can make sense Connect for all the dots, watching. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you know that kind of bleeds into what's the homework for an actor mm -hmm. and you know I did you did you do any research for this role? Did you like go home and watch some FBI shows <laughs> or you know it, typically with us as you know it's it's sure. all cyber crime genre stuff. Did you watch Mr. Robot? Yeah. Like what was your homework oh, process? Oh, well, I I was lucky to have seen a lot of that stuff oh, prior. Okay. Okay. So okay. So you had built, some had a built -in. exposure. Yeah. Um, but there are some things from what I've watched in the past. You know, with like procedurals, where uh, you know there's some scenes when you're going through the setup of who's the unsub and what do we know about their profile and things like that. And um, so, kind of knowing 
the pace and tone of those types of projects. Shows, yeah. yeah. Shows or okay. movies and gives you a good sense of pace because you want to be able to match that pace, you know, and that is, tone. Is this the, the most challenging role you've had to play with? Because I, I will admit, especially as the writer, yeah. there are scenes where I'm just like, oh my God, this is a really difficult scene with the language it's very scientific it's the your criminal profile your behavioral right. analyst for the fbi there's a lot of nomenclature and a lot of um you know it's not very colloquial in yeah. the way that you know criminal profilers speak and there are scenes that i'm just you just masterfully art is it out of all of the characters that you've played in your career is this the most challenging from that perspective for the lions yeah Okay. I think so. When you have to be right about specific terms that you don't use every day, um, obviously it gets easier when right. you see them, you know, in one script to the other to the next, then you do start to be familiar with it, which is fun. But um, I enjoy the challenge. Okay. Because I'm just looking for every opportunity to get better. Okay. And so challenges are welcome. Yeah, that's... But it is, it was challenging at yeah. first, but now it's becoming easier. Yeah, of course. Now it's fun. Yeah, well, you're great at it. You're great at it. I don't think. Final question. What oh. what was the hardest scene for you to film and why? So it's, it was also my favorite scene was in the helicopter. And I'll oh, tell you hard... why. See, I thought you were going to say the suicide scene. I'll tell you why. Well, it's, it was, it's hard for a different reason. Okay. Because when you're walking near an active helicopter that you've never been around before and they're telling you how to interact with the actual vessel so that you don't chop your head off or you know yeah get in the way and then cause the plane to crash whatever you right. know so technically it was the most difficult because you're trying to be in the scene, but then it's also like, okay, to get in, I have to grab this part and then grab yeah. here and then swing around and you don't want to There's look other... sloppy yeah. and you have to look like you've done it before, which hopefully I did. Editors, yeah, please you, you be did, kind to me. So I think it was, it was that just from an actual physical, technical standpoint, it was difficult. Em emotionally difficult scenes kind of happen all the time. I'm getting better at them as they come but well we that was a challenge as well we love having you part of the night shows family thank you thank you so much you're, you're, love you guys yeah it's great you you, you make this show so we appreciate oh, you you're the best thanks <laughs>